of the things that happens a lot, and a lot of you have probably seen this, where you actually get a disk that will show up in disk management and Windows or something, but it doesn't say healthy, doesn't say NTFS, you're missing all your content here. If you got this, don't replace stuff. Don't be, I mean, in most cases, you're not dealing with a firmware problem. You may still have a head problem or something else is going on or something, but ultimately that meant that I read some data. If I even got this far, I got a partition table, I've already made it through initialization, I've already made it through the main portions, I probably have a functioning board, I probably have firmware okay, I probably at least have a good head. So that would be a bad thing to do. And I've seen this a lot of times and people go, oh, I, you know, I saw this but it didn't work. You know, this is probably corruption of some other kind. If any of you are any good with electronics and stuff, you can also use an oscilloscope or a meter. Uh, again, this is, a, this is probably a topic that could take a week by itself is how to attach the oscilloscopes and meters to boards to test them and do electronics repair. But there is a way of actually using an oscilloscope or a meter to tell whether your board is working correctly without having some fancy equipment that actually runs through all the tests. This is an oscilloscope, uh, and this is basically telling me right here, in this particular case, I can tell a lot just by looking at this, this, this particular graph because I have a 12-volt signal and a 5-volt signal. And so that means I have a 3.5-inch hard drive because 2.5-inch hard drives don't have a 12-volt signal. They only have a 5-volt signal. So you end up with a situation like this where you'll have a 12 volt. This will actually be, oh, the motor spins up. I actually get, you can kind of see how it staggers. This is actually going to be head assembly as it starts to work. So you'll actually start to see how the movement and what is actually happening in power consumption in the processor. And you'll actually see your, your, you'll be able to tell whether or not it's functioning correctly or not. If it wasn't functioning correctly, and this was a three and a half inch drive and five volts was completely dropped, then I probably have some other kind of problem or board problem or something along those lines. Uh, but it's just one more way in the list of things to know that you can actually tell. But what if I don't have that kind of information? What if I don't have that kind of equipment or I don't know enough? Uh, as I already said, serial numbers, smart information, blah, blah, blah. Um, but there is something that will tell you something else just by visual examination. Uh, and again, this is one of those things where you would have to remove the lid of the drive. So take precautions when I'm talking about removing the lid of the drive to actually do something. If this is literally, if this is like your corporate networks, you know, system and you wanted to, you know, do a recovery and you have to have it, don't go playing with stuff until you actually understand what's going on. So get 20 drives and play with them first and try to understand what's going on before you start doing this. So, so here's the thing. Uh, basically what we're going to look for in this, and I have a video coming up, I'm going to look for the head seeking what's called the system area. So the system area can, can be in three or four different places on the platters. So it may be on the outside edge, it may be on the inside edge, it may be in the center of the drive. But when you actually see the heads move to read the system area, it's very intentional. You'll actually see the head actually move to that location, it'll jerk for half a second like it's reading something, and then move again. And so you can tell when it seeked it and where it actually read it from and know whether or not you've got it. So this is what I'm going to say. So this is going to be what you're looking at. Yeah, you'll actually see head move, seek it, and it'll do it on purpose and move purposely to another location. I powered off and do it again, so you'll see it one more time. But uh, so you'll see the head will seek, it'll move, it'll do it intentionally, move to its correct location, and, and it actually read a system area. So at this point in time, I know my firmware is probably okay. There's a few exceptions, but for the most part, my board's probably fine, my firmware's probably fine. I got to the head assembly, which means my preamp is probably fine. So that means the basics of my head assembly are actually working. And I can tell a lot just from the function of seeing that happen. So I don't go rushing out to go get a board and try to do something else with it. Now, if I had a damaged spot where that head was, that is damaged SA. So this is actually an SA area that would have been stored in the center of the platter. Something happened to the head while it was at that location. Maybe it was dropped while it was shutting down or something. And then dug a big old hole right in the middle of that platter. And so it, that destroyed the SA area. That's crucial to the drive's function. And in many cases, it's crucial to actually doing a data recovery. There's only a few exceptions to how you can get around this problem. One of them is doing something called a live hot swap. And I talk about that in other talks. So you can go see other videos on that. But there are ways of repairing that. But your functions are now limited. You're, you're, you're you know, probably down to a 30% success rate or something in that neighborhood. Uh, it drops dramatically. So head problems. All right, so here's a sound. And hopefully sound is working OK. All right, so uh, what I'm going to try to describe here is a clunking problem. All right, so a, a lot of you have heard like a drive start up, and you can hear it intentionally go to its location and read content. But there's two other sounds that you hear quite a lot. One of them is tick, tick, tick. And then there's a clunking sound. 
most of the time a clunking sound will mean that you have a bad head. Does it necessarily mean you can't read data? No. But it means you probably have a bad head. And if your drive still comes ready and still reads content of any kind, serial number, whatever, then the bad head that you have is probably not the system area head. It's another drive, another head on another platter. Okay? And that's important to know because there's still a possibility of reading all the others. And so I'll, I'll describe that in a second. Here's what it'll sound like. Or something similar. I mean, it'll sound, it'll sound fairly much like that clunk, 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 clunk. And uh, that's an older drive, so it'll sound a little bit different on older drives. But it's still the same repetitive pattern that you'll hear over and over. Sometimes after doing that and starting it up, it takes three and a half or four minutes before the drive will actually come ready. But if you have MHDD on and you can see the drive and actually come ready, and then you can do a shift F2, you can actually get a serial number from the drive, you at least know the SA area head was good. If that does that for more than three and a half, four minutes, then you might want to shut it down and figure out whether or not you can do something. You can still do damage to the drive, obviously. If you've got a bad head, you probably have a bad platter or something else is actually scratched. Uh, it, basically, the system keeps resetting the head to actually go back and read a sector. So it'll actually continue to hit that back and forth. And so it'll actually cause the head to actually go back to its park position and return uh, very fast, quickly, a dozen times. So you'll end up in a situation like that where you'll hear that clunking sound. This is what it would look like. So in this particular instance, I've got a stack of heads, and this is the head that's missing. So you'll actually end up with this position. Now, I've actually done, I'm actually doing a head replacement on this. I was successful on this drive. Um, I had to do two or three, actually, to get all the data off of it. But uh, basically, I'm protecting the heads as I took it off with a foil tool that I made out of basically uh, like uh, gum wrappers and stuff like that, the hard ones that you actually poke your stuff through on the plastic. Uh, you can make those. I have videos online about how to do that, too. But you can actually do a head replacement. Don't rush into doing the head replacement because that one bad head doesn't mean that I can't read other data. I can read other data. Let me give you an example. This is what it looks like if I was to sequentially read across this drive till I hit the bad head. So what happens here, this is block zero, LBA zero, which is sector zero. They mean the same exact thing. And then as I ran along the drive, I was able to read this chunk of data. So maybe I had four heads on this drive, and maybe this was the third head that was bad. So in this particular case, I read all this data, and I was able to store this data. Then where it was read, I wasn't able to read anything because now I have a bad head. It will take tremendously a large amount of time to read that bad head, to read the content from that bad head. So it'll look like it's imaging along and be fine for a while, and then bam, it'll just start you know, looking like it's corrupt or doing something. It has to reset this head for every error, every time, for every sector. It could take forever to do this. But it's still possible that I might, with the right equipment, be able to turn this head off read the other data, and then t fix that one head and fill back in the data I'm missing. Because the more that you swap heads, the more detrimental it is. Sometimes it's hard to actually take like a stack where you actually have 10 heads and get all 10 heads aligned, but you might be able to get the one bad head and the system area head realigned and get those two done, read the data, and fill the holes. Does that make sense? You guys? Yeah, it is cool. It's really awesome. Uh, so for instance, and people think that Oh, well, look, what if I read the 75% of data and I had this one bad head? Then that means I have nothing. Well, that's not true either. Uh, now, in this particular case, maybe, because this is at sector 409600. And just off the top of my head, I know, what is, anybody know what's at 409640? Anybody? You Mac people. <laughs> Whatever. So uh, the beginning of the Mac sectors for where the catalog is stored is at 409640. So the actual spot where the binary tree for the max catalog is going to be right about here. Uh, so if I don't get that, I, I don't really know where my data is. Anyway, uh, so back to what I was talking about before. If the data is, let's say I have four heads, one of them's bad. Does it mean I don't have anything? No. All right, so data is stored. It used to be in the olden, olden days. Data is written above and below every platter all the way down. And it's not, it's not done at the same time. Uh, it actually takes time to turn on and off each head. It, so basically what ends up happening is you have a latency problem. If you have a stack of heads, everybody thinks, oh, well, they're all writing in parallel. That's not true. They are writing one at a time, and they have to turn them on, turn them off. So in this particular case, what they said is, well, what's the fastest way for us to write data? So the manufacturer maps out the, the data that's on the platters. And so in this particular case, you'll actually see I have zone one on this head. And then I'll have this many sectors. So I'll have start of LBA0 to 4 million. So I'll actually have a chunk. I'll have 4 million sectors that are in 